and then the rest of them are coming in for 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Morning, Mr. Bowman. Hello, sir. Uh, could you send the people that, who are in the choir when you f they finished with their work? They can come down. And then the rest of the children, just at 10 o'clock. Yeah, if they th year threes want to come, when well, they're ready, I'll be in the hall. Right, year threes. I've known Marek for probably about 17 years. Um, my children came to Bourne and they were in the choir. He's a very special man and I've been working here. I've been lucky enough to work with him for about six years. Marek's eyesight has gradually got worse since I've known him. Um, I don't know how he gets around and does it. I really don't know. He's half blind. He can only see the. Uh, he can't see the ground anymore. And he, and I don't know how he plays a piano. If he can't even see the keys, and he's very intelligent and he's very passionate. What's that doing around your tummy? Please. This is Ohomsi, this is Adams. Excuse me. Who's this? He like, to look, he has to look at someone else to look at you. So like he can see you through the corner of his eye, but he can't directly look at you and see you. I will need somebody with good eyesight to check. Hands up first, they're in a group. Hands up seconds. Could you, could you three move down? You have to go in the middle, you have to come down. Tight, and stop, and you check your posture. Strong back, relaxed shoulders, breathing out, breathing in, long S. Can we have the stage lights on, please, Mr. Bowman? The colored things. Mrs. Elhomsi, Mr. Bowman, any adult, does this look Tidy. He's like uh, really cool because he plays the piano even though he's blind and he can like memorize all of those notes. He's, he's a bit strange because when he tries to read a piece of music, um, he has to look really close to it to see what it says. But that's what makes him him. She's not, she should be here getting ready into her place. Okay, Jen, then we've got Angelina, is she here? Okay, Angelina, Igar, uh, you guys, are you in the choir? Yeah. Are you playing instruments? No. Okay, later on you'll be sitting in that long row. Do you remember like something in the long row? Yeah. So the fact that he's visually impaired and that the kids are aware of it is sometimes funny because he doesn't necessarily know who's around him, so he will go like, hand on their head. Who's this? Who's this? Why are you being naughty? Or you say that they find it funny. At the same time, I think they all appreciate the fact that he's making such an effort. And I think they appreciate that even though he can't see them, he knows who they are by not even the sound of their, of their voice, the way they move or the way they sound, their breath sounds, or I, I don't know how, they, how he knows them. Just get your places and then you'll know where your places are. Okay. If like the computer's not working, because he doesn't know really how to work the computer, yeah. he will like, because we have really smart kids in our class. So then, <laughs> so then Zed will go up and he'll, he'll do the computer for the us. Kid in the class. 
he couldn't use a computer because it would damage his eyesight, so people come and do the computer. I've taught quite a few people now to do it, and, uh, yeah. Okay, shh. Now I just need to try, we've never tried everything back in track. As well as other conductors, it's really like good that he that he can conduct still, and make us a good choir. I came here for an, an interview uh, in the morning at nine o'clock, and as I walked through the doors, I heard the choir singing in the hall, and I just thought, "Wow, that is amazing! This is a school choir. It's only a small school, and yet the the, the music that was coming out of the assembly was great." When I've been here longer, I realise now why that is, and it's due to Marek. Um, he's like dedication to singing and the work that he puts in and the joy that the children have when they're actually singing, it just comes across in all the things that he does. Okay, so let's start again. Can you not? So Mr. Homsey's like, yeah, when we, um, in the morning when we're coming into choir, she always opens the door and greets us in and that stuff. And Mr. Homsey, um, she's a big help. Yeah. Oh, I'll just write it out. I'll just write it out. Yes, Anna. I'm quite happy to tell you. Yeah, I know, but if, if it's written down as well, then I feel secure. The choir is so important for children that, that struggle a little bit at school, whether it be academically or behaviour. Um, it gives them focus, and I've seen the difference that it's made to children over the years. Their confidence is, is much improved, and it means that at school they can do better in the class. Um, mainly it is the confidence, but by being in the choir, it gives them that sense of achievement and it gives them the confidence and you just see their behaviour improve which uh, completely changes their school life for the better. Is that Sarah and Sarah? Sarah, Sarah. Where's Mia? So if like Mr Magnet does something like wrong or like strange, you I ask him, him about him and I correct him and sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I write and he doesn't realise. Could you sit in your places now? What places? We places, don't have people, places. places, people. She'll tell him when he's got the wrong page or the wrong thing. Yeah. And I love yeah. that there's an openness to their yeah, learning. They're, yeah, they're, 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 they feel confident enough. Yes. They can, they, they're on an equal standing yes. really, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. They feel confident enough because sometimes there are mistakes in the music yeah. and they're, 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 mm. they're quite confident to say, and he'll mm. say thank you. Mm. Telling yes, me that. I love Thank that. you for telling me that. Mm. He needs our help because he's half blind and we we try to do as best as we can to help him. This one's for you, Mr. Marriott. Here we go. There's a piano part. I'd like to be able to see that because it's too small. Thing. So, what key is it in? How many sharps of flats in the key signature? Um, it's two sharps. Okay. You're on your own at the moment. Which one is it? So I can photocopy it. Oh, oh you just got it. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, there. We'll have to make a big version. Is this the box? Yeah, this Okay. Two sharps, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Dum, 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 dum. With Cathy. Ready and go. Can 
just play me your first, first seven or eight notes and stop when I ask you. Ready, beginning, go on your own. And hold this. Can you make me play? Can I hear that note? Ah, that lovely. Can you go? Don't notice that. Listen to the D. Listen. Sing, sing D. Sing D. He does like this stuff with his hands. It's like notes on the um, piano, but just in like letter. In hands. Like in hand signs thing. A door. A door. <laughs> A rare. A me. And a saw. No. And the law. Wrong. And a door! <laughs> we will be introduced and when we're doing uh, any day, bright new day. That's right to the end, two from the end. The kids were just so respectful mm. and understanding um, of the, the, the children there. Um, it was amazing. Really, really, they were just so respectful. I really liked doing the sign language because all the other disabled kids were doing it and I just felt like really happy because they were doing it and it taught all of like the choir to do it as well and then we could all do it together in in assembly and i remember we were all playing all the kids were playing outside at lunchtime and they were just all together they were just all mm -hmm. together they just the, the, their behavior was impeccable and it was just like everyone was the same thank you for coming special need people and we were all singing together and they sang this is me like and they were like really strong and they were like this is me and I don't care who like annoys me yeah. Oh, hang on, they've never, they could hear they've never heard clarinets in their lives, come on they've never heard, go, 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 go for it hey guys, can you, can you go, go a second here Keith, Daniel and where's Nathan let's go, go, go Let's do it. Wait, let's find out what song. Daisy, Daisy. Come on, out the way. Let's go. Nearly slice someone's knee off there. Like right, girls and boys. Where are you going? Here. Come on, here. Here. You need one, don't you? You didn't say One book's song. fine. One book. Now, what's this? Yeah. What's this? Daisy, Daisy, Daisy Bell. When you talk about that respect as well and respecting the others, it does lead into his disability and how they're so comfortable around him and his disability and he brings them with the inclusive choir. There's an, a sort of a level of respect that is underlying for anyone in music. Doesn't matter what you look like, doesn't matter where you come from, doesn't matter if you're new, doesn't matter if you're an old person. Yeah. There is a level of respect. If you're gonna engage in this music with us, we are all respectful of that.
Mr. Marignac is like no other teacher I've met. So he can be serious and funny at the same time. And I need your violins. Don't get your violins. Yes. Yes. He can be sarcastic but not acidic so that kids can understand what he means and laugh even if a joke is not really a joke. Why did you do that? Okay, I'll have to do it. Right. Who's Silly girl. He can take charge of a choir of 70 children and make them all listen and keep their eyes on him. Something that most parents struggle with. What's Harry going to do for us? Harry's doing happy birthday, aren't you? Okay. At home I teach him some piano and I taught him some and he played it in a concert. Yeah. Uh, the school one. Do the ending. I now convince him to get in the uh, come in the choir. He he used to not want to be in the choir because he was too shy. Now I he had his first try, and he liked it. Ah, oh. go. Where's your brother Nathan? Would you like to come here? Sorry, I do beg your pardon. Get your hand away. Why not? Left, 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 right, right. Left, 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 right, right. He doesn't know he's left and right. So, that side and that side. Other hand, other hand. Other hand. You can teach him, yeah? Okay, let's hear your piece. me because it's managed to get me into Westminster Abbey, St Paul's and maybe St George's. I like singing, singing Panis Angelicus and Once in Royal David City because they're the ones that got me into St Paul's. Certain kids, for example, one has gone off to private school now yeah. and is singing for the Queen and is in a, a, a choir whereby he is working for the Queen essentially. So when she's when they need the choir, he's there. Now that training, all of that training yeah. to get through it's, those stages was that's from all him. Mr. Marignac's. Yeah. Yeah. He supported him through every part of that and now this yeah. child's off being yeah, so yeah, successful. Yeah. Also, besides being in the class lessons, I've been on outings with the school choir itself and they are spectacular. You could hear a pin drop when they're singing and they stand out from all the other choirs that I've seen in these events. finds the note and then he whispers it out loud so then we know which note to start on and then we just then it's then if you find the start note then you can do the rest he plays on the piano and then we all just hum it mm -hmm. yeah that's right moving in find me a middle c and hum it now we check on middle c please Shh. now can we have an e major chord Angelina, put your hand up. You go first. I will indicate which year comes in. 
I want hands down, faces this way, Natalka. Who's this gentleman here? Brian. Mr. Borman. Hello, sir. Lovely. Music has been the key thing that helped Maria get through her first years in this country, because I have to say we moved here six years ago. And in her first year with Born, the main thing she wanted to be a part of was the training choir in her reception years. Learning languages in the choir, I've learned French, English and a little bit of Latin. Learning French is helpful because there's a to communicate with us when we go to different countries. It has helped her, I think, learn the English language maybe because she came here with no English six years ago. And it has helped her bond and find her place and belong with the school and with her colleagues. Because he's come oh. here from another country, there is just a level of appreciation for anyone that's struggling with anything, whether yeah. it be language, whether yeah. it be disability, whether it be just confidence. When he brings a class into his music lesson, he says hello, good morning in all different languages and the kids know them all. Mm -hmm. They know the responses. And it was because when he was younger, he found it difficult. I don't know if English was his first language and he was he felt the odd one out mm. because no one spoke his language. Mm -hmm. Before we perform it, this is in Swahili. Eve may have happened. And the mums have been cooking. And the children are on the dance floor and they say, Mum, come and join in. So we're gonna sing with you. Please stand up. Say Mbele. Mbele. He's learned to say, hello, how are you, thank you, um, have a good day, I don't know, all sorts of things in my own language, and he can do that in so many other languages. So because we have so many different cultures and different languages in the school, mm -hmm. he just embraces every single one of them, and, it, and, yeah. and he says every single greeting mm -hmm. in every single language. I had to get a list from reception of how many different languages, mm -hmm. second languages, mm -hmm. so that he, he knew 100% how many he needed to do and who to. He says different languages around the world, or how you say good morning and we have to try copy him. Oh yeah. So he will say um, good morning in English, then he says Bon, bonjour. Then he just says a whole bunch of languages. please. Hands by sides, leave your hair alone. I need to check that you're symmetrical. He helps us if we don't understand it. He'll put people who know the note next to them so then they can hear the note and then they can actually sing the right note. And then if they get the note wrong in the performance, he'll be whispering like, yeah, and she'll be quiet. <laughs> and then we'll find out who it is and then Bornham is win because we work hard and um, Mr Maniac pushes us even though it's good enough and he tries to make us the best people we can. We always win because we're always practising, always working hard, hard and just having fun. <laughs> He's a genius in what he does, an absolute genius. The kids come voluntarily to choir, and if they didn't want to come, they wouldn't have. They didn't. They don't have to. They come at quarter to eight. They absolutely adore him. 
He's tough, he works them hard, but he gets results. And that's why they come, because they know that they're going to win. When there's an introduction, I don't care what happens, I've had situations where a child has actually thrown up on stage and the other children just carried on singing, the TA came and took her off. You don't... You don't stand like that, you don't do anything strange. Here's your introduction. When I first didn't go to choir, I was like, the first week Joshua was there and I... Like, this was a few years ago and he was one of my best mates, so I would just... I said hi and then he said, how was it? It's, it's pretty fun and then I joined and then I started to enjoy it. But I like the fact that there is that mutual respect but also that level of expectation. I'll stop it every time you're not looking at me. Hard work, they see the results, they enjoy it, and they get the results. What do you like doing? I like singing. over the moon when he sees them get it right and when they, they've got it right and he's, it's just like a celebration within themselves quietly while they're still singing. We're very lucky yeah. to have him here and um, he would be an asset to any school. But I'm very happy school. as a parent that my children have been exposed to his um, philosophies of music. So now they're, one's learning piano, one's learning this, one's learning. They're finding it easier to learn because of the foundations he's laid. I like um, the song called We Will Remember Them that we sing every year at the Polish War Memorial. And it's about like the soldiers that died in the war and we just like remember them. So I think it's really a beautiful song. He is Polish. He's Polish himself. It's very important for him. He yeah. does, he's learnt the whole Polish um, anthem since he's Polish and then he sang uh, at the Polish War, war Memorial all by himself just singing the Polish anthem. When Mr Marinak teaches us a song he makes us like introduce it. So the year sixes and maybe some of the little ones, we like start off um, yeah. introducing it. Like we have to like tell a story about that, like the whole song and it has to be long. It can't be like two words about it. Makes it very complex. Each song that he teaches them, he tells them the story behind it. So if it's about war, he tells about, he you know, explains to people that have been affected um, and how they felt when I'm silent. When I'm silent, mm. that's the one. When I am silent. Who did that? Jenna can do it. Jenna, okay. Who wrote it? Uh, uh, Joan C. Silent. Varner. Joe C. Varner. When I am silent by Joan C. Varner. I'll remind you anyway. What's the story about? It's about a girl. No, no, no. It's 
and tell her what the story is about. Yes. Come back and tell me. She doesn't want to do it. She wants to do Don't another do it. one. Okay, do, do it. I love music then? Or just oh, say yes. <laughs> Uh, Jenna, okay. Joshua, Take this could you teach Joshua, Jenna, to yeah. the story of this song? What's the story of this song? Joshua. And then when they introduce you, he makes me write tiny passage and then I read it. So there was this one, it was called When I Am Silent, I to say what that's all about. It was about a girl who was taken to a concentration camp. Do you need you to tell me the story of this song? It's about a girl who died, and it's like what's where did she die? Um, in the we just go camp. The, in the Holocaust. Yeah. And it's words she might have been thinking yeah. before her end. Yeah. Right, can you practice saying that to Jenna? And we talked about the girl that wrote the song and how she felt and the feelings and, and, and so he, he explains everything to them so they can understand and, and feel the song. I, when, and I, by, by, Joan C. Vaughan. This story, uh, this song is about a girl who died in the Holocaust and um, the words in this song are what she might have been thinking what she, before. Uh, can't have you running around. Sophia there, please. Said to me, who's gonna dance? Will you remember me? We're remembering the girl, <laughs> one of the girls that died at Auschwitz. So that you must have, you're, think, you're singing her thoughts for her. So her spirit lives on, even though she was destroyed by evil. You're singing beautifully this morning. Could I go from the second verse, who will set the fragrance? Mainly respect for, for, for all of the different songs that they sing and the, the, the times that they've come from. When I Am Silent by Joan C. Varner. This song is about a girl who died in the Holocaust and the words in the song are what she might have been thinking before she died. Music is about sound, and sound works in time. And music is one of the art forms that deals with time. It structures time. Music is something that enlivens the soul, the heart, and the body. Music is one of the most basic responses we have. In the deep recesses of the mind and of the brain, the music response is vital, even when we get old, even if we have to suffer with dementia, the music response remains powerful. It predates speech. It is something essential to the core of our being. To be human is to be musical. Music and sound is intangible. It's, you can't hold a melody in your hand. You hear it and it's gone forever. A painting you can look at and analyze and it's there for you to enjoy. You can go from one side to the other side. 
Music is gone forever. Like film, like dance, it acts in the moment. It exists in time. Many years ago, I wondered how to help people sing in tune, how to get them to sing with good intonation, how to help them read pitches off the five line stave. And I really didn't know how to do it. I was introduced to the British Kodai Academy, which trains people in the Kodai approach to musicianship training. Kodai was a Hungarian composer and also a music educationalist who brought over a system of music education which were originated here in England. And the prime mover there was a man called John Kerwin and Sarah Glover. And it was she, Miss Glover, in the 1830s, who published a book using these particular hand signs. And it is through this that the children can objectify sounds. I'm particularly interested in what happens to our year six children when they leave Bourne Primary School. I know that many of them move on to other schools, obviously, and they join choirs and they learn instruments. Uh, some have gained places at colleges of music. Uh, some have working in music theatre. This is good. Once you leave here, realize that you do have a special skill if you've been working in a focused way for five, six or seven years, you will have a skill that is firmly founded. Your knowledge will be an intuitive knowledge. You will have skills that will be useful to any choir director. So I do encourage you to carry on singing, join a choir, join an orchestra, continue with your musical instrument learning if you haven't yet had formal lessons in an instrument, this is a very good time to think about it. And good luck in your musical futures. Last time we won the Watford Festival, he was actually crying. And I saw him, I was right in front of him. And yeah, pretty sure that means he's proud. I remember one time when we were doing competitions and then like, at the start we messed up or something and he was like, no, we have to do it again, stop. And then we done it again and it was really good. Yeah, I was, think we won. It was um, thing. Hillingdon Sings, I think. And then we went to Winston Churchill and Churchill and um, we did a wrong, we did like the wrong verse on the first verse. So um, he was like, nope, 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 wait. And then we did it again and then um, we won. What does that teach you? It teaches us like never give up and yeah. like always be resilient and determined to like yeah. work harder. I think it gives them a sense of I can do anything. If he can teach a squire and he can't see us, then I'm a full person. I don't have any disabilities. I can do whatever I want or I should be able to do whatever I want. They, if like someone makes like a joke, he makes the joke even worse. Yeah. Like, but it worse in a good way yeah worse but it makes him more funny because he made it worse <laughs> does that really make sense <laughs> yeah yeah he doesn't give up on children that can't sing he gets the very best out of everyone uh, he gives them time patience and it's really rewarding for the children when they see that they can do something that originally they couldn't do they're just something special and it must be due to him and the time that he puts in and like the dedication that comes across from all of those children, that in other areas of the curriculum, you don't see that desire to do their utmost. He doesn't want to be seen as being disabled. He doesn't want people to feel sorry for him. He just wants to get on and do it. Um, and that, that's how he wants to be. He, wants to, that he doesn't want to be, uh, get any sympathy or be given any concessions. As far as he's concerned, he's got a job to do and that's it. I am proud of them when I see them on the stage and see the results of the hard, intensive labour they've gone through. I'm proud of them when they sing an exultant piece with joy and happiness, showing their true human spirit. I'm proud of them when they win a competition, but that's in fact not what it's about. But for the children, it's such a lift. 
when they win something. I'm proud of them always. <laughs>